pal. This is Ghost Rider. This is Ghost Rider requesting a buzz by. Man, why don't I get a cool handle for cons? Your mum will wake up. You good? Uh, no. You haven't told me which direction you're coming from. Lex, which direction are you coming from? I'm going to angle the cameras. Mm -hmm. I feel the need. The need for speed. And I hope you like that intro, something a little bit different, something that this video is all about. And that is about getting back to doing what you love. And that can be in life in general, but also in this video, I'm going to show you how in the gym, you know, maybe you got into this that you thought, I want to look a certain way, I have to train a certain way. And today we're going to prove that wrong. Because the fact of the matter is, is if you're training in any facet, you're going to improve and you're going to look better. But the biggest part of training, the biggest part of doing anything that you set yourself to do is enjoying it. Because if you don't enjoy it, you're not gonna give it 100%, you're gonna fall off, you're gonna get bored, you're gonna get sick of it, you're gonna quit. In my life, I've started getting back to the shit I used to enjoy. Loud music in my ears, head down singing badly in the gym, boxing and just being generally athletic and challenging myself. That, that is what it's about. But before we get into that, a lot of you following on the gram have seen the old girl, my classic, my lovely, who you just saw in the opening clips. And a lot of you say you want a little run through the bike, so, your wish is my command, so genie genie, blinky blinky, granty granty. Right, so you can all stop messaging me now after this video, because here we are, the one that gets all the attention, the girl that gets all the love on Instagram, the BMW K75C, this is from 1985. She is a beautiful old girl, but she didn't start like this. What she would have originally had is some big old fairings that have been big panniers on the back that are all fitted in, like some of the touring BMWs that you see today been stripped down a lot of custom bits put on it and it's still an ongoing project beautiful to ride one of the most favorite bikes I've ever ridden even with the knobbly tires on which you can see are very knobbly bit by bit I'm just making them my own so we've obviously stripped off all the fairings this seat here is, is a, a full new addition that's getting some gel put in it and a little bit of a recovering I'm thinking ox blood red with that like quilted pattern oh yes not a very nice textured white paint on the tank so I want to strip that tank back to the aluminium so for now it's covered in leather like my other bike so it keeps that kind of matchy matchy going custom front guard made there that was made by a friend of mine big shout out you know who you are thank you very much for making that one for me handlebars they've been stripped down we've got some rental risers on there make it a little bit scrambly give it that nice comfort feel as well because you can angle these back and forth as you want all the dials stripped away a little electronic dial put on here instead and that just tells me my speed pretty much bar end mirrors so that obviously gets rid of the big ant antennas i just like that a little bit sleeker i would actually have that on all my bikes if uh, it looked better on the sports bikes but it doesn't so on this though she's perfect these are all standard all the little switches and frizzly bits and whizzly bits and electrics the headlight though that is not but this is getting upgraded very soon but this is a three-eyed led haloed so this is fantastic for letting people know you come in they're definitely not missing you but full beam on that great blinding kill squirrels the the main beams of it yeah little leather side pouch this is just on here one i think it looks cool but two it's awesome to just chuck your lock in little bits and bobs like wallet and things like that if you need it just a nice little bit of space there i have put on here though some protectors and what these do is means i can have panniers on the back some like soft ones and they stop it knocking into the wheel and then i can strap them down onto there redid these so i got these rebought them refurbed them and put these ones on instead of the old ones because the old ones have been chopped just in case you know you want to pick up pick up a hitchhiker make your journeys a little bit fun if you see me out and about now i fully expect a little round at the rear she's got a nice led setup here for the brake lights very very bright i got a new rear shock on the back so this one is all set up makes it nice a little bit less wallowy in the corners new horn as well because you know you've got to let people know and they're in your way. So there you go. You wanted it, you got it. My K75C from 1985. More to be done with it yet. Now for those of you who do follow me online, you'll know that I don't just own this one bike. So if you want to see the others, let me know in the comments section below. But until then, let's get on with the rest of this video. I, actually, before we go, did you get that the whole beginning sequence was meant to be a bit like, like Top Gun here? And if you did, give us a thumbs up. But also, who's excited for Top Gun 2? Because literally been waiting for it since like three months ago. It's the perfect boys' day out. Motorbikes 
Top Gun, back home on the bikes, rum, jacuzzi, peanut butter fingers, dirt, dirty beer. Good old, good old game of solitaire with the cards, you know. Mm -hmm. Little, little cigar, little cigar. Cheese, toasties, little bit of pizza. Maybe an Indian. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, rest of the video. Bugger off. And we're back upstairs with our friends, who we never beat. They always win in the end. The bag work. Now, touched on this last time. If you haven't watched that video, go and watch it. The link will be in the description for that one, and that covers just the bag work basics and things like that. So today, I'm going to give you. Uh, just a couple more things to build on that and that is for those of you that feel a little bit like feel a little, like they are a bit confused get to the bag they're a bit overwhelmed they don't know what to do they just kind of uh, and dead after 30 seconds yeah it's this is this is like tortoise versus the hare you want to be moving around the bag constantly but only throwing sporadically and then moving out so I'm going to give you three combinations and these are my basics that I go to all the time and you can run these through your three minute rounds bam bam bang out bit of a movement back in bang 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 out combination one really easy we're gonna work our distance throughout all these combinations it's simple jab jab straight bang bang and then just get used to every so often once you're throwing it jab jab just move the head jab jab bang slip little habit you want to build and develop on those mechanisms combination two this is a real nice power one it's gonna be a left hook turn that hip over straight right left hook straight right and pay attention to how the hands are always coming back to the face this is a habit you want to develop Back to the face. When you push one, boom, the other comes back. Constant, and that's what we want. So think about that. So slow everything down. Make it nice and slow. And as you get more comfortable, just slowly speed it up, and then pop, 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 pop. Yeah. A little bit more tactful in the fact that you're gonna do a level change on this. So you're gonna come in, one, two, keeping the distance. You're gonna drop and roll, so as if they've thrown a punch back. So pop, pop, roll, come in, body, and come up to the top, head. And that's your three basics. You've got level changes in there, you've got distance and reach, you've got power hooks, but don't just throw these. In between them all, moving around, just throwing a couple of jabs, moving that head, staying on your toes. It's really that easy. Don't be put off by other people being on the bags. Don't be put off by people watching you. It doesn't fucking matter what other people think, what other people say, what other people are doing around you. You affect you, so put the work in. Oh, and hobnob. Where does it go? In well, your face. Yeah. <laughs> Same as last time, I want you guys to see what I'm doing here. When you feel the pain, hear the shots, see the movement. Roll body head. <laughs> oh, it hits like a freight train. First round's always the hardest, always. It's gonna suck. It's gonna steal your soul, it's gonna suck the wind. It's gonna burn. Your lungs might even burn. Finish the round. Sit down. Bring your energy down. Cut in a sweat later, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, breathe. Drop your weight, drop your weight. Let's go. Come on, 10 seconds, bitch. Let's go. Oh. Cannot take me anywhere. Snot's running, sweat's falling. Hair probably looks like a mad scientist. It means we've done all right. Get the party mullet out. Uh, let's head downstairs and play with some weight. I made it again. I made, I made the mistake of eating and then trying to talk to the camera again. It's like being on an awkward date, isn't it? It is. You know where there's just that awkward moment of silence where you both pretend that the food's so good that you've got anything to talk about? Because I was recording all of that. <laughs> Shenanigans over, we're back downstairs, we're in the weights room. So here's the thing, a lot of people come in and they become bored with what they're doing because they're in here doing stuff they don't want to be doing. They're doing things that they think they should be doing. So
sod that. Come in and do something you want to do. You can lift light weights and look good. You can lift heavy weights if you love lifting heavy weights and still look good. But the point in here is we have to make sure that we're doing something that we're going to put our full effort into. Today I'm going to show you what I do in terms of looking after my shoulder health and looking after my interests. I'm going to be supersetting. Why? I enjoy doing that. I enjoy the pace. I enjoy how it flows. And again, we're kind of on a time crunch here. So it's utilizing the time I have available to get shit done that I need to get shit done. The way I'm going to do this, so I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of flexing the muscle, rotating the joints for shoulder health, but also maximize the contractions and hopefully give you some new movements for you to try or some little tweaks on some old ones that you've got bored of. You can change things up, you can switch things up and you can keep it interesting and still move forward, still progress. We're gonna do chest, we're gonna do biceps and we're gonna do shoulders. I'm gonna be supersetting between them. Two exercises per body group, five sets. We're doing three body groups. We do this high frequency style, which means these will get trained again within this same week. So I train everything twice a week, which is why we're reducing the volume, but we're increasing the sets. So over the entire week, that means we actually do more volume on that muscle group. So you're gonna get more progression, but because you're training it twice, that means more variety, more fun, more pace. Right, quick tips. So I'm gonna go through these fast, then we're gonna move, so listen up. We're gonna be starting with the polycrine press into hammer dumbbell curls. With the polycrine press, what that is is a rotational movement for chest, and what it does is make you keep your shoulders in a healthy position and think about where the weight is being loaded. You're gonna come down, you're gonna start at the bottom, you're gonna rotate your hands around, and you'll feel it pull and stretch the shoulders and the chest. You're gonna be back around to normal chest position, up to the top, and then we're gonna roll the dumbbells in, but we're not gonna roll them in by twisting at the wrist, we're gonna roll those elbows in. So you roll your elbows in and squeeze that chest, then back down, rotate, and repeat. Then into the hammer curls, we're gonna grab the dumbbell underneath the top of the head, not in the middle. The reason we do this, we grab it at the top, that's gonna to angle that weight when it's at the base, and that's gonna keep tension on the bicep. Hammer curls, straight after the chest. Go, 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 go. Roll that side. Yes, one. The fuck are you doing on the side? Ah. Oh, God. Uh. Let's move, let's move, let's move. Right, left side work, make that left side work. Uh. Oh my God. Let's move. I keep the pace going, so again, short, sharp, and sweet, so listen up closely. We're gonna now be moving on. I'm gonna be doing a shoulder exercise with a bicep, so I'm not gonna be doing another chest until after these two. And what that's gonna do is give my chest a bit of a reprieve and give those shoulders a bit of a reprieve, because I have a bad left shoulder, which is rehab now, and it's brilliant. I'm able to throw punches again, I'm able to press again, but I also have to make sure that I'm looking after it. You have to give your body that due diligence when it comes to care, and a lot of these movements I'm showing you today are gonna be based around that. If you do these movements, and you feel like you've got impingements, you'll feel one side not rotating like the other. There's something wrong, so keep doing these movements and keep fixing those impingements. We're gonna be now moving on to a bicep one. This is a little bit different. You have seen this if you watched my three best exercises for biceps. This is one of them. It's gonna be a standing forward angle curl. So what we're doing here is we're literally deliberately pronating the shoulders a little bit and having the arm at an angle with the straight bar. And we're gonna be curling here, imagining we're on kind of like a preacher curl, uh, you know, the bench. I call it a preacher curl, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Whatever that one. That one. Where it's the bench and the one you shouldn't do because it fucks shoulders up. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna pull it up, you're gonna sit your arms on your lats, shoulders forward but controlled forward, and from here curl up like this. See how that angle stays? That's what's important. This is gonna work both the long head and the short head of the bicep. So this is a great movement. From there, we're gonna move and we're gonna do shoulders. We're gonna do a standing Arnold press. This is fantastic because it's gonna force you to make sure that your hips stay in line, keep your core tight. I'm gonna be working again that rotational motion of the shoulder. So if you've got unhealthy shoulders, this is a good one for building that shoulder strength. I'm gonna be using like a 12 on this. I expect to get around about eight reps. So that's in front of the face. I'm gonna roll out. What we're not doing is this short little roll here. We're gonna roll out. It's gonna make that scapula engage. It's gonna take that natural rotation of the shoulder outward and then up. We're gonna press, bring it back down, and then we're gonna roll it back in and then back out. Boom. Core tight, core tight. Ah, come on. One. Uh. Uh. Oh my God. Come on now, don't be a bitch. Uh. Uh. 
God. Let's get him. <laughs> we all bleed. Uh, come on. Ugh, God damn it. Three, two, lift. Ugh. Uh. Everybody else quit. No. Oh. Two you die. Two you die. Ah. Come on, one, two, three. No pain. Okay, so now I've had a bad left shoulder for a, quite a while now. It's gone through a multitude of things. It turned out to be tendinitis in the bicep tendon, which is attaching up into the shoulder, which is causing problems and impingements. That is all kind of healing now, but also I still have to be careful. I want to press, but pressing dumbbells is high risk for me right now. This is my way of getting around that. So you take a calf press and you turn it into a Viking press. Now, some of you will be lucky enough to have a Viking press in your gym. If so, then use that bitch because they are so good and what that does is help us contain where that shoulder joint is able to move from we're able to lock it down lock it in position and start training that motor mechanic to keep it locked into that position for when we go back to the free weights it'll then feel stronger and less destabilized so what you're going to do is you come underneath lift with your legs from here then you're going to drive keeping your glutes tight core tight see how the shoulder is in front of my head so that's really safe for the shoulder what i'm not doing is coming up and over here hyper extending anything overextending, arch in the back, none of that. Core tight, hips in, back straight, lower back locked in. So all of this core, all this section is tight and strong and allows us to then focus through with just this press. Boom, real nice, real strict. Absolutely beautiful. People might look at you funny, but Sodom, when you've got those bolder shoulders in three, four months time, they'll be asking how you did it. So again, we're not using masses of weight, but the calf machine is there. I'm going to be walking from there, sitting my ass down here, picking up these. I'm going to go into hammer press on the incline. So what that means is we're going to bring it up to here on the hammer press. And what we're looking for is just to extend up to where it feels are natural, which is going to be here. Don't try and overextend and let those shoulders pop. Keep the shoulders back, chest up, and you're just going to keep the back head of those um, dumbbells kicked up, as you can see in there. So not this, this. That's going to keep it focused on the chest, off the shoulders. From there, it's just press in a slight triangular motion, bringing them together in the middle and squeeze. Boom. If you find that pressing with dumbbells hurts your shoulders, give this a go. This might be your way around it. This is still gonna let you get the pressing motion. It's gonna help you focus that chest. You can do this incline, you can do this flat. It's just a lovely movement. This is it. End of the day, end of the day. This is it. Once these are done, that is the session done. Smashed. What, hour 10 again? If hour that, 10, if, if, that, that, if that, if that. Let's move, 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 no excuses. Four, four, one, two, one, two. One, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Yeah, I like it happy. Let's go. Five, eight, <laughs> you don't need more weight when you speed that up. Bring the rest down. Speed the sets up. Same, same result. That's injury. I want two more. No pain. Breathe. And again. Come on now, Lex. Just two and you're done. Don't be a bitch. Take that left side, Rick. Take that left side. Drive. God damn it. Six. Five. 
That killed, man. It looked like it killed, man. That was harder than I thought it was even going to be. So what I wanted to show you here today is you don't need weight. You need intensity, you need focus, technique. Think about what's your strengths, where are your weaknesses. Find your weaknesses, start making them a strength. Don't just focus on your strengths. Use those strengths to help support the weaknesses. Come in, try a few different movements, but don't expect to be trying something different every single day and get a different result. There has to be consistency and there has to be basis. So on the style of how I'm doing this, I will practice this same movement every other time. But when I train the muscles for their second time each week, I will do something different and that's how it flows. It's interesting, it's reducing that risk of injury because we're not smashing the same things all the time and we can focus on a lot more rotational than on the secondary day, secondary day, second day, then you can do those more linear movements. But just reduce that rest time, count your fucking rest times. The amount of people I see sat, scrolling through their phone, looking around, watching the goddamn TVs. Before they realize it, three minutes has passed and to them think it's 30 seconds. Count that goddamn time, count it, and when it gets to five, start getting ready. By the time it's counts to three, those weights should be on your knees or in your hands, and by the time you get to one, you should be ready to go. That's it, this one, I think, dude. Yeah. I think that's enough. That's We've given you enough information for one session. I hope you like it. If you do, let me know in the section. In the section, my brain has gone fluffy. <laughs> Comment down below if you like this, what else you wanna see, what movements, where you're struggling with, what's hurting you, what's been hurting you, what, what do you find that's difficult, and we will try and come up with some solutions. I will hit those comment sections up and we're gonna start making that a conscious effort like I do on my Instagram. I go through my messages and as I said in the last video, guys, if you're feeling a bit alone, if you feel like you don't have anyone to reach out to and you're feeling, I don't know, like the things are closing in a little bit on you, go to my Instagram, DM me. I will get back to you. I spend an hour a day minimum going through my messages to give back a little bit of what the support you give to me. So do it. If I don't reply, literally just right underneath your text message, bump, and it'll bring it back up to the top of this for me because to get to your messages, I have to go through what is essentially a holding folder. Then once I see your message, it then comes through into my inbox. So I have to literally physically filter them all myself and I promise you I will do that. Thank you all for the support. I hope, I hope you're loving the fact the way these vlogs are coming back. We've got some new men behind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I hope that, you know, we're gonna start building this team. There's some very, very exciting stuff coming for you guys. I'm literally in meetings all day tomorrow. I'm getting home now. It's nearly 10 o'clock at night. I'm gonna get home. We're gonna finish up. I'm gonna get to bed. And in the morning, I drive early to Manchester. Meetings all day for what is hopefully gonna be really exciting 2021. 2020 can suck it. 2021, we're coming at you. Oh. <laughs>